of the Oversill project is to capture and collect and record stories of people that moved from the slums of Manchester in the 1950s and 60s when the slums were cleared into the Oversville estates that were built across Greater Manchester, Langley being the first, followed by Darnhill. So we're focusing on Langley and Darnhill. My name is Rick Walker, I'm Director of Cartwheel Arts. Cartwheel is a, one of the leading participatory arts organisations in the North West. Uh, we've been going since 1984 and from the very outset we've worked on the Langley Estate, initially doing a lot of work with children and young people and for nearly 20 years we've also worked on Darnhill Estate, organising Darnhill Festival and again doing lots of work with young people and schools on the estate. So the Overspill project was quite a natural extension for us of the work we do in supporting communities, giving people pride in the place that they live and uh, in this case exploring history which was a bit of a new area for us. So the Overspill project came about for a few different reasons. There's been quite a lot of changes to the estates over the past sort of 10 to 15 years. Particularly within Downhill there's been a lot of closure of community spaces so the high school's gone, the boxing club was burnt down, both of the pubs have gone, the youth centre's gone. And I think that when community spaces close it changes the identity and the feel of a place. It's an 18 month project and it's been a very busy project, lots of activity. We've been running workshops throughout the project in both estates and we've had some community events as well in the summer and in the winter. Uh, we've also been working in schools and we've worked with the youth group in Downhill, working with dementia specialists as well in care homes. We've been recording oral histories with people which will then go into the archives when the project's finished. We've got a project website and we've also produced a book as well as this film. It was very nice to be able to involve some of the organisations and individuals that we've worked closely with on, on both estates over the years on completely different projects in Overspill, bringing, in, bringing them into talking about the history, which we were aware of. We, we knew that people had talked about moving out from Manchester, maybe in arriving indirectly in uh, Langley or Darnhill. So people who'd worked on our Tell Us Another One creative writing project were able to be involved in this and people involved in Downhill Festival as well. So it felt like it tied together a lot of the work we've done in both estates over the last 20 to 30 years. It sort of brought it together in, in one piece, which we haven't done before. The Downhill Festival takes place every year in summer and Cartwheel Arts are involved in organising that. But in 2019, the theme was time travel in honour of the Overspill project. So we worked with the youth group to produce a film in the, the style of a Pathé film and also created a time machine which was at the festival and allowed people to go inside and travel back in time and see the film and see what it was like to live um, in the 50s, in the 60s in Downhill. The young people of Downhill made the time machine with Oliver Bishop who has an alter ego, Professor Jiggett. So we ran a competition to design a time machine and the winners had their ideas made. I've been working with the youth service at Darn Hill to make this wonderful time machine. And inside the time machine there is a film, and the film is all about how Darn Hill was built. And we've been working with the young people to explain about the Manchester slum clearances, the building of Darn Hill, and people can visit our time machine today and actually watch that film. So, two children, uh, year two and year three, designed the whole time machine. We put their designs together and then we created it basically. I'm quite proud of it. I'm proud of the children as well for making and designing this wonderful time machine. That time machine then went to the People's History Museum when we had an exhibition there and that was fab for us. But it was the first time Cartwheel Arts has um, been in the People's History Museum, first time we've been in a, a national museum, so it was very good for us. It was also really good for the people involved in the project because we had a launch day where we took a whole busload of people from Langley, a busload from Darnhill. We all came together, um, had some lunch, had some speeches and people got to see their words and their stories in a national museum which I think was really nice because it actually allowed people to realise that their stories are important and they're actually part of Manchester's history and it's an important part of Manchester's history. So it was fantastic for us to be able to show the work at the People's History Museum and, and particularly to be able to have the launch event there with Councillor Janet Emsley uh, opening the exhibition. Really I think brought people together and, and um, made them feel that their, their work was valued that their contribution was important, that it had been worthwhile taking part and that it makes people feel more confident, gives them pride in their estates and makes them feel that they've 
um, got something to say that they can have an effect on, uh, on the place they live. I mean, it was amazing for Cartwheels to have an exhibition at People's History Museum. They were great partners to work with and really sort of believed in our ethos of, of sharing stories of, of ordinary, everyday people and giving it that platform that it deserves. We've had some really great volunteers on this project, um, local people, some students from Manchester University, and we've had some really great support from the Archives Plus volunteers as well over in Central Library. So I came on as a placement student through the University of Manchester and helped with a kind of variety of tasks really, just kind of archive research and kind of general tasks, but then also get involved in the oral history interviews. It's been great kind of learning about something I had, had no idea about previously and kind of learning the community and kind of the rich history that's there. I'm a volunteer at Manchester Central Library in the archive department um, and I was involved at looking at the archives that the City Council hold that are actually in the library. So there were photographs, newspaper articles and then we started going back and researching how it happened. So we, we worked out the Acts of Parliament that were involved right back to 1908. So it was really interesting. I think the exhibition's really good. I think that, that there's a combination there of kind of what we did and the history, but of what it is now and what people think about what happened then. I think it's a very good mix, yeah. The Overspill project's great because it means that people can tell the stories. Of, some of the stories are, are to do with nostalgia and to do with people reflecting on what's gone on in the past. But basically we're living in the present and we're moving into the future. So the past is great, the past is important because it's a people's sense of identity that's based in that past. But we need to move that on to the younger generations because the young generations have not got the same needs and wants as people from that past. And uh, we need to work out making sure that the regeneration of those estates takes the people with them and takes the people with them in what they want to do and not what the people that are planners want to do. On a personal level, my grandparents were part of the overspill story, so uh, both sets of grandparents moved from the Collyhurst, Cheatham Hill and Harper Hay areas of Manchester out to Downhill in the 60s. And one set of grandparents have passed away now and the other um, are in the 90s. So it just really got me thinking that there's a whole cohort of people who it's really integral that we capture their stories before it's too late really. So we're here on Lewis Drive in Downhill, which is where my grandparents moved to when they first moved to, uh, to Downhill. Um, and I've got lots of really lovely memories of playing here when I was younger. I spent lots of time with my grandparents. It just felt like a really happy home. And they knew everybody on the estate. Uh, so it was kind of running joke in our family that if you went to the shops with them, you'd be gone for three hours because they'd see loads of people that they knew. So that sense of community did build and lots of their neighbours did move up here. My grandma's brother moved out to Withenshaw and my grandma's sister moved to Moston. So they saw a lot less of each other but spoke on the phone every week. But you know, months would go by where they, they wouldn't see each other. So families who went from living on the same street as each other went to seeing each other maybe once or twice a year. So we've had a series of workshops um, across Darnhill and Langley. So we've had creative workshops where we've worked with various different artists in different mediums. And we've had my estate workshops where we've just got together with cake and brews and shared stories there. We worked with Small Things Creative who are dementia specialists. Um, and we held a series of specialist dementia workshops as part of Overspill. So we went into care homes and memory cafes and other caring settings and work with people with dementia and their carers to explore the overspill theme. From there, we went on to train some of the carers um, in actually how to deliver those workshops themselves. So it's a nice legacy for the project because it means that there's people trained in how to deliver those projects and also the resources uh, that go along with that training are on the website now for people to access. So as part of Cartwheel and Small Things Overspill project, uh, Storybox was invited to do some workshops on the themes of family and homes and also community to various different settings. So today we've been delivering a, a Storybox training session, um, so just introducing people to Storybox and how we approach delivering a session, um, preparing for one, developing themes and such, and just giving people an insight into how they might be able to incorporate some of that into their work.
The summer event that we held in Langley was in partnership with Status for All, who are a community group that have just taken over the Bowley Pavilion and reopened it as a community centre. So we, we joined forces with them and kind of gate crashed their launch day and made it kind of a bigger and better event. It was a really, really busy day. Um, loads of people, loads of story sharing. Professor Jiggett made another appearance, did some storytelling there. Um, and yeah, just another opportunity to collect stories from people. My mum was the, one of the first people, Ivy Rower, she was one of the first people to move on to Langley. Her memories of the Oversville estate was when they used to queue up in shops. So they used to have um, separate queues for people who used to come from the Oversville. So the Oversville would go on one side and then the people who lived in Middleton for a long time, they went in another, they went into another queue. They never served the people in the Oversville queue until the other ones had been served. Well, I'm 64, and uh, when I was a baby, came straight onto the estate as a baby with my twin brother and my older brother. There was a lot of good community spirit, and that's what we're trying to bring back now. You know, getting all the community, all different ages involved. We've got the arts and crafts, we've got knitting, I'm doing a growing project. Sue so and Terry are working with young people from the schools and the local area. So it's getting everybody, all ages involved. We've brought lots of people together from the community who've worked really hard to make the event. We've had alpacas in the community farm. We've had some storytelling, we've had lots of visual arts and a map relating to the estate so people can add their own stories and lots of environmental art projects as well. But it was really nice that Catwheel and Pavilion were able to work in partnership to make this happen today. We worked with the Langley writers and they created some poems for us, um, working with a, a poet on the day, which are now again shared on the website. What I've been doing uh, with Langley writers today is uh, working on a project, um, uh, an overspill project, I'm working essentially with, with poetry and perhaps a couple of new devices in which they might approach the subject in a different manner. But I thought the response was, was great. They were a very attentive group and, uh, and I thought there was some really original writing come out of it. Really every aspect came through there. I think some humour, um, some very moving and poignant stories and, um, and some quite surprisingly raw stories as well. <laughs> it's interesting because I came onto Langley, I suppose, at the decaying time of the overspill when the original vibrancy of the estate had gone right down because Manchester couldn't afford to maintain it because there was all they could do with the funds they had to maintain the estates within their own city boundaries and the overspills got neglected. So it was at a time of change and they were wanting to hand it over to the local authorities but the government at the time would not allow that but insisted they set up a housing association instead. So that's what we did. They went on to perform their poems at uh, another event we held, the Winter Langley event, uh, where, where they could get up and, and share those with everybody in the community, which was really nice. I remember Our Lady's Church before it was filmed. Yeah, where it was lit enough where the old pub used to be. Yeah. I remember everyone seemed very religious. They were all lighting candles. No, they weren't that religious. It was because it was that cold in winter, it was the only way to keep warm. So Overspill has attracted quite a lot of attention from people who are interested in, in housing issues and in the politics of social housing more, more generally. I think there's more work to be done in this field. So we're looking at extending the project and maybe looking at the areas of Manchester that people came from to move out to the Overspill estates and to look at the processes of regenerations that have happened in some places but very much not in others which are left behind with the areas that have become gentrified. I think the Overspill estates were built as a kind of utopian vision. I guess the question is did that work? This project's been great for Cartwheel Arts overall because it's helped us get our name out there a bit better. One of the things we do is look to kind of strengthen communities. That's one of our strands of work and it's certainly done that thing, allowing people to share their stories, getting to know the history of their own community and for us to get to know the history of the communities we're working in. So overall it's been a really positive, great project. <laughs>